Since we're setting up two 30 out sixes, the FN in 1903, and the 1903 A3 stock is, it just came through major surgery and is in rehab right now. And the FN stock still has oil drying. This seemed like the perfect time to just go ahead and talk about the 30 out six cartridge. And real quick, for, for those of you that want the short version, it works. I, just bottom line, everybody, either you're a 30 out six fan and you love it, or you love some other cartridge and your cartridge is better for whatever reason than the 30 out six. Well, for all of you that your cartridge is better than the 30 out six, you're right, it probably is. But still works. And that's the thing about the 30 out six, no matter what criticisms of it you hear, Nobody ever says it doesn't work. So, that's the short version. Now for the long version. This particular cartridge here is a 7mm Mauser 7x57. Seven seven. And as many of you know, it's one of my sentimental favorites. And just an outstanding hunting cartridge even after all of these decades. So why are we talking about the 7 Mauser in 30 out 6 video? Well, because this is both the inspiration for and the parent case of the 30 out six. The US military was introduced to the seven millimeter Mauser and the 1893 Mauser rifle during the Spanish American War. And they quickly realized that their newly adopted Craig Jorgensen rifles, well, they were already outdated. The Mauser rifle and cartridge had made that obsolete. The cartridge just it wasn't powerful enough, flat shooting enough, and the Mauser rifle was just a better rifle. So the U.S. military went back to the drawing board real quick, and they straight up copied the Mauser rifle. and came out in 1903 Springfield. And when I say they copied it, I don't mean they were inspired by it. I mean they straight up copied it, and Mauser sued the U.S. government for um, patent infringement, U.S. lost and actually had to pay miles or so much for every Springfield rifle it produced. I think it's like $10 or something for every rifle. Okay, so the 1903 Springfield, it is a Mauser. There were some, quote, improvements made to it over the Mauser. And many people would argue that those weren't actually improvements, but hey, it's, it's, they're essentially the same, though, outside of... The Springfield has a cone breech to make feeding a little easier and two-piece firing pin. That's why I set up the 1903 and the FN at the same time. It just seemed fitting to set up both of these great rifles since they're essentially siblings with the M98 being the older brother of the 1903. And you can see the family resemblance here. There is no doubt that this Springfield is a Mauser. Well, the government, they needed a new cartridge for their new 1903 Springfield Mauser rifles. So what they did, they took the 7mm Mauser, they made it a quarter of an inch longer, they put in a 30 caliber bullet, 220 grain round nose, and they called it the 30 alt 3 So actually it was the, the 30... U.S. government of 1903. I believe that was the official designation. Okay, well, in 1905, the German army took the 8mm Mauser. They went to a smaller piece of lead in it, so it was faster shooting and flatter shooting. And the U.S. military said, well, that's a really good idea. <laughs> so <laughs> they took the 30 out 6 and they changed it. They took the 30 out 3. They changed it from a 220 grain round nose to a 150 grain spitzer. And they did this in 1906. So the new bullet became the 30 out six. They also made the case just slightly shorter. It's the only modification to the case was the neck was just a hair shorter. Okay, well then they went back and they rechambered all of the 1903 Springfield rifles that had been chambered for the 30 out 3 
and all of those 1903 Springfields, everybody said they had a 24 inch barrel. Actually, they had a 24 inch barrel minus one thread, which was about a tenth of an inch, because when they rechambered all of them, they cut them down one thread length so they could rechamber it. And I don't know if they actually stuck with that throughout the years, or I suspect they worked that out. But so that's how we ended up with the 30 alt six. Well, that was a, a really big deal as far as military history. I mean, most of you are aware of how significant the 30 alt six was as far as U.S. military history. World War One, World War Two, extremely significant. It's still used even up into Vietnam as for sniper rifles. So it's very significant. But this was also very significant for the history of hunting and hunting rifles and cartridges. And yes, hunting has a history, even though we don't talk about it much. Okay, this here, this was America's first high power rifle cartridge. So it got used. It's, it's pretty popular for those needing a high power cartridge. And the 1903 Springfield, that was America's first high power bolt action rifle. So the, both of them got used. Well, all of the early developments as far as for bolt action rifles, high power ones, happened with the 1903 Springfield. America was a lever action nation. And Okay, let me back up. Our first high power rifle actually was the 1895 Winchester designed by John Browning and it was chambered for the 30 alt 3 and the 30 alt 6. But it's a lever action. So again, our first high power bolt action was the 1903 Springfield and a lot of these made their way into civilian hands and they were used extensively. Okay. Well, and that was huge. I mean, it, it gave Americans a high power rifle they could use. They could buy a European rifle, but that was expensive. I mean, very expensive. So, you know, you've, you're trying to get a Holland in Holland or, you know, an actual Miles or a Rigby or something like that. We're talking some serious dollars. Okay, the Springfield rifle, 30 out six cartridge, it gave Americans a bolt action rifle and high power cartridge. And more importantly, okay, we had three things coming together there that this was the significant part. Because the 1903 Springfield was adopted by the US military and used for decades, that made these actions and rifles plentiful. There were a lot of them around. Well, that meant over time, just average civilian shooters could get these really cheap. And then they could get Spanish Mauser rifles that the 1893s that eventually had become obsolete because of the 1898 Mauser. They could get Craig Jorgensen's really cheap and so forth. But the 1903, well, as these became more and more plentiful and cheaper and cheaper, civilians could get these and, okay, the, this gave them a cheap rifle to work with. The ammo was plentiful again because the government used it, so there was just absolutely a ton of ammo available. And these were easy to modify. These were easy to rebarrel and rechamber, so therefore, civilians and gun companies, ammo manufacturers, government, everybody could just mess around and tinker with these and experiment. Well, that's why the 30 out six is the parent case for so many cartridges today. So by the 19 teens and 1920s, average, normal, everyday Americans, gunsmiths, hobbyists, they had access to a quality bolt action action that could easily be rebarreled and rechambered to whatever. And they had a case to work with, high capacity case, and they started experimenting. 
And the people of that time, they, that's what they did. They were industrious. They were very mechanically minded. They didn't have the electronics we have now. So they weren't dependent upon electronics like we are. And they knew mechanics. They knew things and they were good at working with them. So they started experimenting. So 1912, Charles Newton, he took the 30 out six case. He said, hmm, what if we necked it down to 25 caliber? Well, then his experiments with necking down the 30 out six case, which Savage, he worked for Savage. They shortened the 30 out six case in addition to necking it down. And oh, look, short action cartridges. The 253,000 Savage. That was basically our first short action cartridge. And they needed a short action cartridge for their for the Savage Model 99 lever action rifle. And then a few years later, Savage said, well, hey, let's come out with the bolt action. So Savage came out with the first bolt action rifle for sporting use produced by a major American arms company, the Model 1920 Savage rifle which was called the Mini Springfield. And with that rifle, you, you could get the 253,000. But they also took that 253,000 case, they necked it up back to a 30 caliber, that became the 300 Savage. So that was your whole birth of short action cartridges. That same 300 Savage, by the way, the US military in the 1950s, they made the neck a little bit longer and then called it the 308 Winchester. So, birth of all your short actions, or at least for here in the US. Well, there's a lot of other experimenting going on at the time also. Somebody at Winchester said, hey, let's take this 30 out six and let's neck it down to a 27 caliber. 270 Winchester's born. It came out with the first Winchester bolt action rifle, the Model 19. Model 19, <laughs> the Model 54 in 1925. And it was chambered for 30 out 6 and 270 Winchester. So, and then Remington, they came out with the first bolt action rifle for sporting use and full size cartridges with the Model 30 Remington, and I believe that was in 1921. So that was the whole birth of a bolt action and our modern cartridges here in the U.S. You had the same experimentation going on all over the world then. It's just there wasn't a lot of plentiful brass everywhere. Or each country had plentiful brass, but it was whatever their standard issue cartridges were, and they had plentiful rifles, it was whatever their standard issues rifle, standard issue rifles were. So Great Britain, Commonwealth nations, you've got everybody experimenting with the 303 case. So they're necking it down and coming out with the, the 270, 303, and you know, any cartridge you can think of under the sun, they experimented with and came out with. And they were doing most of their work with surplus through Lee Enfield actions because that was plentiful for them. Here in the U.S., we had 30 out six in the 1903 Springfield. So that's where the experimentation and the development occurred here. That's why the 30 out six is, you know, the the parent case of so many of our modern cartridges. And the 1903 Springfield, that's the parent rifle of so many of our rifles today, which you trace that back right back to the Mauser 98. So the 30 out six has a very significant role to play in the history of hunting cartridges here in the US, but it's become popular all over the world. But most hunters don't care about the history of hunting cartridges and rifles. Uh, that's something we don't generally talk about. Most hunters only care about the latest technological advancement and what's gonna help me right here, right now. And that's understandable. Most hunters don't get many opportunities at game, especially big game, deer hunting. A, a deer hunter, if you take two deer in a season, it was probably a pretty good season for you. You might not get see a deer in a season. 
if you took five deer in a season, if, if that's even legal in your state, for a lot of hunters, that was a record year. So we're not getting many opportunities despite all our effort, all of our work and so forth. So when we go hunting, we want to take advantage of absolutely every advancement we can to make sure we can make those few opportunities count especially those of us hunting public land, because that tends to be hard, fewer opportunities. Okay, so most hunters only care about the right here, right now, and that's why you hear almost nobody talking about the history of hunting rifles and cartridges. So how does the 30 6 compare now? What is relevant about the 30 6 to hunting right here, right now, in our modern age? Okay, well, I, I can tell you right off, every cartridge out there is better than the 30 out 6 All of them are. If you don't believe me, read their advertising. Every cartridge is flatter shooting than the 30 out 6 It's a better ballistic coefficient than the 30 out 6 It's more energy than the 30 out 6 uh, more velocity than 30 out 6 uh, Better sectional density. You, you name it, every cartridge out there is better than the 30 out 6 Ballistic coefficient, all of it. That's true. Seriously, I, I honestly believe every cartridge out there is better than the 30 out 6 But it's better than the 30 out 6 for one thing. I've said many times with ballistics, in order to gain something in one area, you have to give up something in another area. 270 Winchester, it's faster and flatter shooting than the 30 out 6. That's true, it is. If you compare a 130 grain bullet in the 270 Winchester to a 150 grain bullet in the 30 out 6, if you compare a 150 grain bullet in the 270 Winchester, to a 150 grain bullet in a 30 out 6, the 30 out 6 is faster because it's a larger bore diameter. Larger bore diameter is going to give you a higher velocity with the same weight bullet and powder charge. Physics. And that's why the 35 Wheeling, which was a necked up 30 out 6 to 35 caliber, was such a devastating cartridge on even bigger games because it was even even larger diameter. And with the 30 out 6 compared to the 270, 30 out 6 larger bore diameter, you could go up to much heavier weights and bullets, plus you get longer barrel life. So, yeah, the 270 is flatter shooting and faster than the 30 out 6. But it gave up some things to achieve that. And that's every cartridge out there had to give up something so that it could be better than the 30 out 6. And the 30 out 6, if you take every cartridge out there, all of them, from the 22 long rifle to the 50 BMG, and yes, I'm exaggerating this, so don't get your calculators out, but if you take every factor for every cartridge and you average them all together, velocity, energy, everything, I think this is what you end up with as the average of everything, the 30 out 6. So you've got a cartridge here. Yeah, it's not as good as any, it's literally not as good at anything as other cartridges. It is the smallest of the big game cartridges here in North America. It is the smallest of what most cons would consider adequate for big game. And I'm talking all big game. So we're talking the big bears and everything. This would, most would consider this the smallest of what's adequate for that. Many would consider this the largest of what's needed for medium game. Okay, so I know you can use a magnum for deer hunting. Many do. But it's not necessary unless you're trying to reach way, way, way out there, like in the next county. As a matter of fact, most would say this is overkill for deer. Well, this being what many consider the largest of the cartridges for medium game, the smallest of what's adequate for large game, that still makes this though, even though it's not as good for either category as other cartridges, 
This is still the only cartridge I know of that's both a medium game and a large game cartridge. That's why this is the cartridge that's famous for its versatility. It's famous for doing it all. Well, there's an old saying, jack of all trades, master of none. Well, this is a jack of all trades. So therefore, it, this isn't going to be the best at any one thing. It can't be. No, no cartridge has it all. No cartridge is perfect. That's why there's so many cartridges. But this still works on everything. And there's no other cartridge I can think of that works on everything. That's the beauty of the 30 out 6 And it's still plentiful. It's still cheap to shoot. It, it is extremely versatile. This year, okay, it, it, despite all of our, the shortages and component shortages for reloading ammo shortages, I have been given five boxes of once fired 30 out six brass for reloading by different people this year. They didn't reload, they saved their brass, they got, you know, gave me the brass. And it wasn't because you know, I, I have a YouTube channel, it's just one guy was at the range, hey, here. You know, I see you're shooting a 30 out six. You, you want these two boxes of brass I just shot. He didn't know me from anybody. Uh, old friend of mine that I work with, he hadn't hunted in years. He said, hey, you, you want these three boxes of brass? Sure. <laughs> I have to shoot a 30 out six and hunt with one just because I've got so many components for it and can reload for it and everything else. And it is versatile. I can download it. I can upload it. I, and what I said at the very beginning, no matter what criticism anyone has of the 30 out 6 nobody can say it doesn't work. You can say it's overkill, you can say it's too much for deer, it's not enough for bear, it's whatever. Everybody's got a criticism of it, except for the diehard people that love it. And all of those people are right in their criticisms, but none of them can say it doesn't work. It works. And that's the thing about the 30 alt 6 That's why it's still so popular after all of these years. That's why so many still use it. You know, 115 years later, it works. No matter what you don't like about it, it gets the job done. Now, I thought this would be pretty interesting to throw in here at the end. The Hunting Rifle by Jack O'Connor. Yeah, famous for the 270. He did a chapter just on the 30 out 6 in this book. Well, I didn't, I knew I was going to do a video on the 30 out 6 cartridge, just I had to because, I mean, you know, we're setting up two 30 out 6s. So I did not read his chapter on the 30 out 6. I, I didn't want to know what he thought about it. I, I wanted to wait until I formed my own opinion and thoughts and put it all together and what I planned on saying about it. And then I wanted to read his thoughts, just you know, see what he thought about it. Okay, well, Jack O'Connor, despite being so famous for his 270, he loved the 30 out 6 also. He used 30 out 6 extensively. And this is what he wrote about the 30 out 6. For sheep hunting, I'd a bit rather have a 270 than a 30 out 6. And I also prefer a 270 for antelope hunting and open country deer hunting. For big soft skinned stuff that shoots back, such as lions and Alaskan brown bear, I'd rather have a 375. For varmints, I'd take something like the 22 250 or the 6mm Remington. And for deer and heavy brush, I like a light semi-automatic, and I would use a round nose 180 grain 308 bullet. But for all kinds of jobs in the open country and in the timber, on big animals and small, at long range and short, there isn't anything more versatile than this perpetual bestseller, the turn of the century 30-06. So Jack O'Connor, he reached the same conclusion I did. There's just, 
Despite every cartridge being better than the 30 out 6 for something, there's no cartridge better than the 30 out 6 for everything. Hence its legendary versatility. And one final thought on the 30 out 6. Choose the right bullet for the game you're hunting. With, with it being such a versatile cartridge and there being so many different bullets available for it, and there are a lot. You don't want to pick the wrong bullet. You don't want to pick one of these 55 grain accelerators. This is a 30 out 6 case made for a 30 out 6 rifle. It has a sabotaged 55 grain bullet in it, 22 caliber bullet, that travels at over 4,000 feet per second out of 30 out 6. You don't want to use this on deer, even though it still works. My dad's got one on the wall to, you know, kind of prove that. Not the ideal choice, though. And you don't want to use a bullet that was made for a 800-pound grizzly bear on a 100-pound doe. Not ideal. And I've talked extensively about shot placement with deer, putting tough bullets in the shoulder so that you get expansion, putting bullets that rapidly expand band in the lungs behind the shoulder and you'll lose less meat that way and get a lot of tissue damage. Keep that in mind. I told a story in a recent video about an experience I had with the 30 out 6 where I shot a deer on a power line. I shot the deer behind the shoulder in the lungs with a tough bullet. I got very little expansion. That deer ran off and I knew it was a great shot. I, I knew I had hit the deer and the deer wasn't going that far. So I'm sitting there happy. I got a deer. Well, then another deer steps out the exact same spot. Put the scope on him, pull the trigger. That buck hit the ground. So I'm sitting there happy thinking, I got two bucks on the ground. Great morning. I get up there, look at the deer, and he's got two holes in him side by side. Inch apart. Two entrance wounds, two exit wounds. It was the same deer. It had ran off, it had went down and crossed the power line, circled back, crossed the power line in a low spot where I couldn't see it, and then came back around to that same spot to see what that was. And I said in that video, I sold that rifle two weeks later because I wasn't having a rifle that you shoot the deer with it and it comes back to see what that was. <laughs> I still hate that I sold that rifle. That was a good shooting rifle. Bullet selection and shot placement, that applies to all rifles and 30 out 6 in particular because you do have such a wide selection there. And if I seemed a little biased toward the 30 out 6, I have to admit I am. I mean, this is one I've used for a long time and it's always worked. So yeah, I am a little biased toward 30 out 6. It gets the job done. I think that covered it for the 30 out 6. And we're going to get back to work on these and hopefully get these some progress made on these stocks and get these together here real soon. Then we're going to start the load development on the 30 out 6. That's why this just seemed like the perfect time to talk about it. And check us out on Facebook. I'm still figuring that one out, but well, I might one day. So if you want to see how any of this turns out to load development, stocks or whatever, and what we're into next week, which who knows, make sure you've hit the subscribe button and notification bell. And if you got anything out of the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't give it a thumbs up, let YouTube know you like hunting and shooting videos. God bless and have a good day.